Okay, we begin. Share screen, homework. Okay, here is the homework you have to submit as soon as possible because they want to run grades this Thursday. So let's see, let's go to this. Okay, so you have to simplify this expression, right? Use mm -hmm. the identities, Pythagorean identities, co-functional identities, even odd, all the identities we checked last class. Okay, so I'm going to write this expression right here. So it's um, cotangent square plus uh, of x plus sine square of x plus cosine square of x of negative x. So what is this equals to? Okay, let me just close this screen. So I have this, okay? So you have this identity, or you want to simplify this thing. Okay, remember the identities we have. We observe this one and we see that we have um, the trigonometric value for a negative angle. So I have to go to my formula chart, formula booklet, right? And look for those identities. So I see the identities right there. So I see that the cosine of the negative angle is exactly the cosine of the positive angle. So we're going to change this one. So we have as cotangent a square of x plus sine a square of x plus cosine a square of x. Now, when you have squares, you have to remember your Pythagorean identity, you see? x squared plus y squared equal radius squared. So the one that we have always to remember is this one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Okay? So, sine squared plus cosine squared, this is one, so you have cotangent squared x plus one. Right? Now, here is something I want to introduce today, and is, what about the cotangents? Right? So let me just go this part. So the homework is almost ready. So this is fine right now, but let's see if we can simplify this a little bit more. So let's see. Remember that the fundamental identity is sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, correct? I'm going to leave blank the arguments because with any variable it's going to work fine. So it's sine squared plus cosine squared one. Okay, there is. Mm -hmm. Then, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to divide all this by one over cosine squared, correct? So I'm going to divide the whole expression, this identity by cosine squared. So I distribute this, dividing this, this dividing this, and this dividing this. So I have sine squared, over cosine squared plus cosine squared over cosine squared equals one over cosine squared. Okay, now I have to remember my algebra. My algebra says if you have a squared over b squared, this is a over b squared. You can factor the power. Then if you use that, this is sine over cosine, everything square. This is a one. And one over cosine squared, this is bueno, is the same one, so you can one over cosine, everything square. Now you have to remember your identities. Okay, let's see my basic identities. Sine over cosine is a tangent. And one over cosine is the secant. So I have tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. So this is another identity we can get from the, um, from the uh, regular first identity, the first Pythagorean identity, okay? But same as I divide by cosine squared, let me just use another board. 
I can divide by the sine. So if I divide everything by cosine, I can divide everything by the sine. So let me just admit here, right? So I'm going to begin with the same identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Now what I'm going to do this fundamental identity, I'm going to divide by sine squared, one over sine squared. Okay, this divide this, so I have sine squared over sine squared plus cosine squared over sine squared equals one over sine squared. So you distribute this number in this three. Well, sine over sine, this cancels, this is a one. Plus, again, I'm going to factor the power, so this is cosine over sine squared equals one over sine everything squared. Now again, I'm going to <clears throat> check my identities. What is cosine over sine? Okay, cosine over sine is cotangent. And one over sine is cosecant. So I have cotangent squared plus one equals cosecant squared. This is another identity we can generate from this sine squared plus cosine squared. I told you, this is very, very, very important. From this one, we can get to more. This one or this one, okay? So we have a little bit more to consider. Now, if we go back to our problem, you know that cotangent squared plus one, what is cotangent squared plus one? Okay, cotangent squared plus one is the cosecant squared. So cosecant squared of x. That is the final answer, correct? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the game all this unit, correct? So we are going to play with identities and we are going to reduce okay. expressions into <clears throat> little ones. I'm going to reduce the most possible. So I'm going to write, let me see, right here, let me just take this one. I have. Mm. So let me just put this one right here. Let me just put these identities, new identities. These are also in your formula booklet, don't worry. So, identities. <clears throat> sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. No matter the angle, so I'm just writing this one. Uh, tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. And then cotangent squared plus one equals cosecant squared. So these two identities, these new two identities can be used, but this one is fundamental. <clears throat> okay, well, uh, <clears throat> let's do another problem from the homework here. Okay, we have for instance, uh, screen, this one. Let's suppose these two that looks as scary. He says, man, with those fractions and those things, this thing looks as scary. <clears throat> I remember, no, not big deal. Everything can be simplified. So I'm going to put here in my board is cotangent x times cosine x over tangent negative x sine pi over 2 minus x. Okay? So, stop sharing. This is the expression I have to reduce. Okay? As well, let's analyze what I have. I have expressions having a pi over 2 and a negative. So I'm going to recall my identities. Here is, yeah. The same is in your formula chart. Sine of pi over two minus x is the cosine. So I can change this by cosine of x. And the tangent of the negative, right? I take my other identity. The tangent of the negative is negative the tangent of the positive. So I can use these two expressions, right? These two right here. So 
this is going to be, I repeat the top, cotangent x times cosine x over negative tangent x times cosine of x. <clears throat> okay. Well, now, cosine divided by cosine cancels, so I cancel these two. So I have cotangent of x over negative tangent of x. Correct? Well, now, cotangent divided by tangent is okay. Let's see how the cotangent and the tangent are related. Mm -hmm. So these are the fundamental identities we got. So you can see here the identities. Tangent is the reciprocal of the cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So I can change this one in some way. So let me see. Let me just separate like fractions. So this is cotangent x times, um, I'm going to put one over negative tangent x. So I'm going to split this as the regular fraction does. And then I'm going to put here, I'm going to change this fraction. One over tangent is the cotangent, you see? So I'm going to take this one. This is cotangent equals negative times one over negative, uh, one over negative cotangent, like this, right? So what I did, so this one, I changed the tangent, uh, I changed the one over tangent times the cotangent. So cotangent times cotangent, cotangent squared, positive times a negative, negative, so I have cotangent squared of x. That's my answer. Okay? So remember, the way out to these problems are exactly these identities. The identities you have in your formula book, let's remember. Yeah? So you go to page, uh, page 9. They are here in page 9. You see? They are here in page 9. Okay. Questions here? Um, uh, I have a question. A ver, yep. So in the beginning, you converted the tangent negative x to negative tangent Correct. x times cosine x. How come we didn't change cotangent x? This one? Yeah, how come we didn't change that one? Okay, this is the point. From these two numbers, however, from this one, let me just put a simple example, two thirds. This is a fraction, okay? If you want to add three plus two thirds and three plus two, and I ask you to select one, which one you select? Three plus two. Three plus two, why? Because there is no fraction, three. correct? So this is the same reasoning. I begin working the ones with the fractions, the denominator, because those are the most annoying. So I don't try to change this one because this is fine. It's like the two right here. So I keep the cotangent and this can be canceled. So I try to change this fraction into no fraction. So I change this by no fraction and they get this one. How do you change this one? It's okay. Let's explore what Antonio said. So suppose I want to change the cotangent. Okay. So I have, let me just open here side and suppose I have here cotangent x over negative tangent x. Okay, what are my options? Well, my options are cotangent is sine over cosine and cotangent is also one over tangent, correct? So those are my options. Let me just put these options here sine x over cosine x over tangent x negative or uh, one over tangent over negative tangent. Do you like these expressions? No. No. Obviously, you change this by a fraction so you get a worse case than this one. But if you change this one by this one, you get something better. 
So the idea is if you have fractions, try to simplify the fraction. Like was I began with these bottom ones, okay? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Because I can begin with this one, I have this problem here at the bottom. So is simplification simplifies, make it simpler. This is simpler than this. You see, this is simpler than this too. Okay, are these incorrect? No, these are correct, but these are more complicated than this one. Okay, so it's a rule in real life, make it simpler. Mm -hmm. Okay, more questions about this problem? Everybody clear? Well, let me just now um, go to the homework. Um, a ver, from this four, select one. <clears throat> Which one looks like scary, like terrible? And I'm going to die, mister. This is too much. Yeah. Uh, this is worse than the coronavirus. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> yeah. Which one of those ones? Three, four, four five, or six. Four? Okay, somebody said four. Okay. So we have secant of x times sine of x plus cosine pi over 2 minus x divided by 1 plus secant x. Okay, not big deal. Let me just go back to my main screen. I have this one, right? Okay, this expression, let's see. <clears throat> okay, let me explore this thing. Okay, I have secant x, sine x, okay. Not very beautiful, but this don't give problem. This is something I can change. And this is a denominator. Well, let me see if I can get something here at the top to cancel something here at the bottom. Okay. So looking for my identities, I see my identities again. And I see cosine of <clears throat> pi, uh, cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is sine theta. So I can change this using this one, correct? So that's what I'm going to do. So I write my first expression. This is secant x sine x oh, sine x plus sine of x over 1 plus secant x. Okay. This is good. Okay. <clears throat> well, this looks better than this. Okay. Something is something. Now, let me see. Uh, I need to simplify something here at the top. Well, this has sign, this has a sign. So to add these ones, I have to remember what I did in algebra one. In algebra one, remember, you have two x plus three x, you know this is five x. Okay, how do you get the five? If you have these x's here, it's very simple. This is a common factor. So I'm going to use the factor. So I have two plus three parentheses x. And you know perfectly that two plus three is five x, correct? It's, when you, it's what you do when you add like terms. So I'm going to do exactly the same right here. I'm going to do exactly the same. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. That's you. Okay. So sine and sine, same as this x. So I'm going to take secant x plus 1 times sine x divided by 1 plus secant x. Now, <clears throat> you know also from elementary school math that 1 plus 6 is 6 plus 1, correct? They are equal. What you have here, you have a secant plus 1, 1 plus secant. So these two are the same. So what can I do? Well, only cancel. And then my answer is sine x. OK? Oh, OK. So what happened to the second sine x? Why not? Which one? This one right here? 
Yeah, because wasn't there sine x plus sine x? No. Right here? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh careful. A ver. Let me see. Suppose you have 3 times 7 plus 7. Oh, what you can wait, do? wait, I get it, I get it now. Yeah. If you do this, they are going to sit you in remediation, okay? <laughs> careful, Zamora. <laughs> of course, you are going to be in remediation. So be careful. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. You see, this terrible thing with the appropriate substitutions using the appropriate identities, is going to simplify to something very simple. Okay, one more to finish today. Okay, so I'm giving you help to the homework. Okay, now from this one. <clears throat> Three, five, or six. Three. Yeah. A ver, Galarza, Jocelyn. Mm. Um, huh? number mm, parece que estás cogiendo four? No, el promo oiga. <laughs> <Tarda más. laughs> number four no four hicimos ya hicimos four oh. three or five three, three? five or six five. Is which one select one five A ver, Jocelyn five Five. 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 Okay, five. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you take too much time, Jocelyn. Yeah. Parece que escoge novio para el prom. Así se está tardando. Minus one <laughs> over <laughs> one plus sine x. This is difficult, okay? Number five. Let's see. Okay, cosine. Yeah, pi over two minus x minus one, right? Okay. You have a pi over two, so you have to look for your pi over two identities. There is, okay? Okay, this is cosine pi over two x. Aquí tengo cosine pi over two minus theta equals sine. Okay, let me just sine of x minus one over one plus sine x, correct? Yep, what do you think? Sine x minus one, one plus sine x. You think it's the same thing? Wait, there's a negative x. Hmm? Uh, negative one x? plus sine negative x. <laughs> so everybody catch this change. This to this, correct? Using this, we get the sign, correct? Then you have sine x minus one, one plus sine x. The situation is, is possible to simplify this fraction. Is this top the same as this bottom? Nope, yes. No. 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 Suppose the sign is three, minus one, one plus three. Is the same thing? No. Same number is different sign. It's not the same thing. Now, here is the point that is going to make this difficult, okay? So, mire, this fraction, technically you say, okay, this is the fraction I get, I cannot move more. No, you can. You can. Why? Because it's very simple, right? Um, let me see. Is really worth this one? Because we can ship this one sine x minus one over sine x plus one. Mm -hmm. So simplify this thing is not going to be that simple because we need to square in some way this situation and we're not going to get too much. So very possible we're going to leave it like that. Okay. Possibly in the as much we get practice with this formats, we are going to try to simplify this fraction. But not now. Just leave it like that. Okay? Bueno. Uh, what do you think? What do you think now? Uh, let me just go to the homework. The next page, okay, 
you have here more identities, you see? Mm -hmm. So, it's the same kind of thing. For instance, number seven. How can you simplify number seven? Mm -hmm. uh, with algebra. Remember mm -hmm. that everything here requires algebra. Cosine x times the square root of cosine x. A ver. Let me just stop this one. Okay. Okay. This looks scary, right? Yes. Yep. But not yes. necessarily is, is that bad. Okay. Let me just, for instance, put an example here with numbers. Suppose I have here uh, three cube times uh, times seven, a square root times a square root of seven. A ver. Suppose somebody asks you to simplify this thing. What do you do? Check this out. You have here a square root of seven and you have here a square root of seven. What do you think you can do? Square. Mm -hmm. No. If you square this thing, you lose the number. Correct? So you have to continue with the same thing. So what you can do is remember your algebra. If you have the square root of a product, you can distribute the square roots, you see? You distribute the square roots. Okay, let's see this one uh, right here. Right here, so you have a square root of three Q times the square root of seven times the square root of seven. Now, what is the square root of seven times the square root of seven? Somebody has an idea? What is this? Square root of seven, square root of seven? Seven. Seven, that's correct. Because this is a square root of seven squared. If you have this together, this is a square, and the square cancel the square root, so you have the cubic root of t cubed times seven. <clears throat> correct? Okay, let me just go now, and I'm going to copy the same procedure. So remember, these are numbers in Halloween dress. So this oh, is yeah. sine cube of x times the square root of cosine x times the square root of cosine x. So you are here in this point. What you did with these two? Well, you square it and cancel the square root. So you have sine cube of x mm -hmm, times uh, cosine x, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. I just remove one square root. Okay, now this cube, what happened in this expression here? The seven is okay, you cannot do more with the seven, but this one cube? can be processed. Why? Because this is the square root of three times three times three, correct? Mm -hmm. Cube. Now, these two are a square. So this is the same as half, the square root of three squared times three, correct? Now, use the same property to split the square root. You see this? It's like this. So this is going to be the square root of three squared times three. The square root and the square cancels, and then you have three square root of three, correct? This is something where, well, I was telling you something we're going to practice in class. No more classes, really. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be the number, right? So check this out here. So you're going to apply exactly the same criteria, right? So this is going to be the square root of sine s square x times the sine x times the cosine x, right? Then you distribute and then you have sine x times the square root of sine x times cosine x. Then, well, you just put this together. Sine x times cosine x times the square root of sine x. And this is what you have to answer. 
So sine and cosine, remember, are the basic blocks. All the other functions, remember your identities, all the other functions are defined based on sines and cosines, you see? Here is sine, here is cosine, here is sine and cosine, here is sine and cosine. So you cannot break this one in little pieces. These are the basic pieces, okay? So this is pretty much the simplification of this, given that you can erase some square roots. And this is good enough. This is not possible to remove, so just leave it like that. Questions here? Complaints? No? Fine? No. When? Why is it complicated? It's easy. It's very easy. But it looks complicated. Looks complicated. That's different, okay? <laughs> but it feels complicated. I'm also... But I think it's when you turn it. Bueno, that's... So first that. that. Okay, bueno. Okay. Check this parallel with this one. What you did with numbers can be done with this one. Bueno, try to complete the homework and submit it. Remember, every time you submit, you get the grade to improve your past grades. So you need really to improve your grades with the work. Even if the homework is not complete, turn it in. Okay. okay? Right. Bueno. Okay. Take care. Okay. Now, another question. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to space. I'm going to space these uh, sessions. Okay.